This will be the first practical video in this series. The principle behind it is pretty easy. I'll start off with two statements, A and B, let's call them. For each of them, I do not know if they are true or false. Uh, using probability, I can then call this as uh, 0 strictly less than probability of A strictly less than 1, and the same for B. Now, let's assume there is an implication, namely A implies B. I then learn that B is true. I then conclude that the probability for A has increased. If this was logic, I would certainly have made a fool of myself now. If A implies B and B, you cannot say anything about A using deductive logic. In the probabilistic realm, things work differently though. First, I'll introduce a couple of examples and then I will uh, prove it generally. First off, a precise but useless example using a die. I'll take a look at the probability of getting the outcome 1 on the die. A priori, the outcome is in the probabilistic realm. In fact, with a fair die, the probability should be 1 sixth. And I'll throw the die and only show you an arbitrary corner. As it happens, there's no eye in the corner. Now that was not an outcome you could be certain of, so the statement there will be no eye in the corner is also a priori uncertain. Here A uh, stands for getting a 1 and B uh, is the observation that there's no eye in the corner. Getting a 1 implies getting no eye in the corner. Here's a more real life example. Let's assume that it only rains when it's overcast. This is not strictly true, and the concepts themselves are fuzzy until properly defined, but let's go with it. Now it's not always raining, or overcast, or clear skies. At the start you have no clue what the weather outside is. You then take a glance in the direction of the nearest window, and observe that it's overcast. It's difficult to see if it's raining or not though. P.S. In this clip it might have been possible to see if there was a heavy rain outside. Now back to the mathematics. First off, the implication A implies B can be written as the probability of B given A is equal to 1, which says that if A is true then B is true. So theoretically I would say that all events in A are contained in B. For instance, the outcome 1 on the die is a subset of the outcome no eye in the shown corner, and rain is a subset of overcast weather. Knowing this, you may readily guess that if A and B are not equivalent, the probability for A is less than the probability for B. For those interested, here's a proof of it. I have now observed that B is true, but I have no direct observations concerning A. However, I can plug that knowledge I have directly into the base formula uh, and I get probability of A divided by probability of B. But B is in the probabilistic realm, so since the pro probability of B is a priori less than 1, the probability of A given B is greater than the probability of A. So my probability for A has increased relative to the prior probability of A after observing B. The formula says that the higher the prior for A and the lower the prior for B, the higher the posterior probability for A. Since the probability of A is strictly less than the probability of B, if there is no um, equivalence, the result will never be larger than 1, and it will only be 1 in the case where the implication runs the other way to i a is equivalent to b. In such a case you wouldn't need probabilistic reasoning. Now let's take the example with getting a 1 on the die. Since getting a 1 implies no i in the corner, that means that the probability is now greater than the initial probability of 1 sixth. If you plug it into the base formula or span out the different outcomes, you'll find that the probability is now 50%. So that's certainly so. But even before doing the full calculation, the principle tells you that the probability has increased. 
Seeing no eye in the corner is evidence that a one has been thrown, meaning that the probability has been raised. As it happens, a two was thrown in this case. As I said, said uh, not a very useful example though. When using the pr principle uh, here on the rain example, you now uh, know the probability for uh, it raining increases. Let's make it even more practical. Let's assume that uh, at this time of the year it's been raining 20% of the time and it's been overcast 40% of the time. It's overcast now, so what is the probability for it raining? Hey presto, 50%. So maybe you should take a better glance at the weather outside before going out to the store. The probabilities for the rain case was purely used as an example. However, a rough estimate of the a priori probabilities will give you a rough estimate of how much the evidence means. Since A implies B is equivalent to not A implies not B, you can also go the other way. If not A is true, then not B becomes more probable. A few qualifiers at the end. First off, the rain example. Uh, I assumed rain implies overcast. However, it can rain without it being mainly overcast. Indeed, the sun can shine while it's raining. This does, however, not happen often. We can relax the assumption A implies B considerably though, and still keep the strict inequality. As long as the probability of B given A is greater than the prior probability of B, we get that the probability of A given B is greater than the prior probability of A. So as long as the probability for it being overcast is greater when it's raining than when it's not raining, overcast implies greater probability for rain. Second, I assume that A and B were probabilistic, uh, and if that was not so, we would get the same result as deductive logic. Third, while the probability rises in such equations as I've mentioned, uh, this may still not mean that the outcome A is probable. Here's an often used example. Say that there's a sickness and a test for that sickness. If you have the disease, that implies that the test will give a positive reading. If you do not have the sickness, there's only a 4% chance that you'll get a positive reading. But it's a rare disease, which only one in a thousand get. You've recently tested positive. That means that you've probably got the disease, right? No. Using Bayes' formula, you get that the probability of being sick, uh, given a positive reading, is equal to the probability of the sickness, divided by the probability of the sickness, plus the probability of getting a positive reading while you're not sick, times the probability uh, for being not sick, which is 2.4%. So it's still so that you probably do not have the sickness, though the probability for having the sickness has risen. Lastly, this result is only valid if you want to handle data on the format given here. If the data you receive contains something extra, the result may no longer be valid. For instance, if you not only learn that it's overcast, but it's a very light overcast, the probability for rain may decrease rather than increase, depending on experience with such weather. Anyway, uh, that was it for the first application of probability in this series. I guess it may have been a bit simplistic for some, but it may be fun to use such principles in some easy day-to-day -day settings.